I want to show you now the difference between a 100 volt MOSFET in a high voltage circuit and a 1000 volt MOSFET. Well, this is just as I'm showing you the information, because you will find circuits like the CVS that uses high power, high current, not so high voltage MOSFETs. But this is just for a very specific situation. If you have a transformer like this, this can also be like a, a 12 volt, 230 volts transformer from the mains that you sure know. But here I have a very special flyback transformer. Uh, that also works with a very special low frequency. And as you can see, it has been built on 21th November in the year 1990. However, uh, here I have this flyback transformer. And what I want to show you is if I use a 100 volt MOSFET and if I use a 1000 volt MOSFET, what's the difference? Here is my circuit. Here is a simple timer driver, 555 timer chip. And here it goes to a MOSFET, which is the IL530 right now which has 100 volts drain source voltage. This means it can take 100 volts between here and there, but if there are more than 100 volts, it will be conductive. This is the so-called avalanche mode, as far as I know. Uh, okay, so what happens is this uh, generator is producing a square wave signal, which drives the gate from the MOSFET. Every time this MOSFET turns the current on, there is some magnetic field generated by the coil stored in the core and so far and so on. Every time it turns it off, there is some high voltage on the output. But also there is some voltage flowing back over the MOSFET because this coil here on the primary side will also generate more than 100 volts of, yeah, let's say, voltage. Anyway, so what I'm going to demonstrate to you is this difference between both MOSFETs. Um, also I'm going to show you the screwdriver here because it has a built-in neon bulb and if the voltage is high enough, we could see the neon bulb light up. I mean on the drain. Of course I won't hold it here because this is not good if you hold it here, but I will hold it on the MOSFET because this is like I'm putting in around 12 I'm putting in around 12.2 volts here and we will see if we get on the primary side enough voltage to light up the near bulb, which will be lit up like on 120 volts or 110 volts, depending on the resistor inside this screwdriver. Okay, now connect it and hold the screwdriver to the MOSFET. As you can see, there's nothing lit up. That means we have less than 100 volts or so, or 110 volts here on this MOSFET. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this again and make an arc on the output from this transformer. Okay, now I'm connecting it again. Now it's connected. Now let's make an arc. As you can see, I can make arcs. They look like as if there was quite some current behind them. Well, kinda, but not much voltage. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this MOSFET with the RF with the BUZ310, which has, after my knowledge, a thousand volts gate, uh, a thousand, a thousand volts drain source voltage. Now I'm going to plug it in, and if I now hold my screwdriver to there, you can see that the neon light bulb actually already lights up on the low voltage side. So this is where my MOSFET is and you can see that the neon light already lights up. So now let's try to make an arc. Aha, uh -huh, something stopped. Okay, <laughs> what's wrong there? Did the MOSFET pop or was there bad contact or something? Oops, I think I popped the MOSFET. Let's try it again. Oh, oh, MOSFET's gone. Maybe somehow they got some voltage on the gate. Okay, well, they have to be fails. Okay, <laughs> they have to be fails in videos. Um, okay, so far about that.